approved for the site mm -hmm. yet, and uh, it's uh, uh, interesting, as you mentioned, I don't think there's any direct residential abutters. They are no, down the street. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, it is something that we can uh, refine the, the, in terms of, um, you know, no, no idling of trucks. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they, they back up and, and, and they can't just leave them running. You're right. fine with that if you uh, add that. I don't know about the backup beep sensors, whether that's a, a the, auto requirement. I think it's an OSHA or, or yeah. something yeah. requirement because we've asked about that before in for other um, uh, site plans as to whether or not that could be limited right. or or completely deleted. And it's and it's beyond the town's control. It's a state requirement, federal requirement, I think, right? Federal. Okay. But we can certainly limit it, limit idling of crosses on that. Okay. Right, or time of day, or if it's not like four o'clock in the morning. Right. <laughs> Do you have any sense whether this will be a twenty-four hour operation, or I you know. just there's? I, I think if they wanted that, they have to come back to the town. Is that no, 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 you can okay. do twenty-four hours okay. operation. So, uh, we'll okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. We don't have a specific user or tenant for the space yet. Okay. Um, and, and, uh, Could we make that a condition if it is a 24-hour tenant to come back before the board if we had concerns about noise throughout the it night? It might be easier to address it by way of an hour limitation. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 like shutting it down from midnight to five. I think, before right. I mean, okay. we, there, there are performance standards that, that any applicant has to meet, particularly in the industrial zones. And in the, um, if, if I can just, I know you, um, you're probably not just, just there yet, Teresa, but some of the questions that, that people are asking um, were addressed in the original decision, and, and I gave you, and it just, you know, I just handed it to you tonight. Um, I gave you a copy, I, I just revised it with, you know, updated plans, updated date, and I changed around a couple conditions, which I can go into in a little bit of detail later, Teresa, but um, there are conditions in here about they have to perform a noise study um, to, to begin with to determine what the ambient level is before they set up shop. Um, and that way we have something to measure. Well, we'd have to call in a consultant, but that's way, that way we have something to measure if there are noise complaints. Um, but Michelle, where 24-hour where operation is allowed and it's not something that they need a special permit by, it's not it's not something that you, you you can't prohibit that or or restrict that. Um, and then there um, and then I also just wanted to mention. I mean, I, Michelle touched on it anyways. But the um, I don't have a specific memo memo for you from the design review committee because all of their comments have been incorporated into the plan. The applicant I think met two times, maybe three, with the design review committee and um, um, landscaping um, and the colors of the building <laughs> were um, were discussed um, you know quite in, in detail um, and then those changes are reflected on the plans that I sent out on Friday you have them just the two pages that were changed in front of you tonight and I know Robert's already referenced those so but I can go through the decision after your yeah, we'll yeah. Rolling down this way. No, thank you. Any no, everything's been addressed that I was concerned about. Okay. The only thing that's kind of left standing is the hours of operation, where it sounds like we have no, it's within the bylaws that it's 24 hours within that zone. Is that yeah. We, um, the, when someone needs a special permit or they're asking for a variance, <coughs> you have some leeway to, to put in hours of, con um, hours of operation or, um, you know, when the sign can be on or not on or, um, you know, the idling trucks and so forth. And then through the earthwork permit, which the planning board used to handle the earthwork permit for industrial, but now it's specifically with the earthwork board. They can put on conditions about hours of operation for the construction of the, um, while the, you know, while the construction of the facility is happening. Do you know if that happened? Yes. Yes. I, actually, you want to talk about that? Um, sure. The, uh, uh, this case, as you know, previously the earthwork permit, uh, typical conditions were added to the special permit that were issued by the planning board. 
we went to town meeting and that's been separated. So in this case, even though they had an original permit that the town felt was still valid and they had posted their bond and they're under construction, they went to the earthwork board recently and got approval for this site again. Uh, the bond being uh, estimated a number of years ago, 2005, it's been updated and increased significantly to cover additional work, and that uh, condition was added as a standing condition as it always is already. Okay, great. I know that there's at least one member of the audience who has a, you have a question, ma'am? Okay, state your, please state your name and your address. 127 Park Street, North Pole. It might be the closest residence. I mean, that is the Eugene Kim. So on that area, would you specify that where we are located? My main concern is the noisy, I mean, I mean, they already mentioned the noisy restriction is not nothing that we can do at this point. That's my main concern, and the water. Because we have well water. You already told me your deck of water goes out to the upper deck. Uh, up to that location, and a little bit goes out to this, which then goes off. It's in the northern direction. Okay, where is my house in that area? Is it how so far is it from my house? You're at 127. 127. Are you on the north side of uh, Bartlett Street? Uh, no, right on the Bartlett Street. That's yeah, we'll uh, the, the north, right on the north right side. It should be. be north so side. it's got to be, I'm not even sure it's on it, It's, um, it's near right. Stirrup Brook. Oh, Stirrup Brook. Okay. The, the so residential it's subdivision. Right. The, 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 are you past Lyman Street? Yeah, right. Okay. The yeah. First, the residential street. subdivision just yeah. beyond Lyman okay. Street, but on the other side, of the, on the yeah, same side as yours. It's, it's if you Quite go, this, yeah, if you go even to your, this one. So, sorry. I think this might. Well, this is Lyman Street here, so you may be either here or here. It might be even further. No, I think it's further north. It might be that. Oh, no, I, yeah. Yeah. that. Because Stirrup Brook is further down. Yeah, Stirrup Brook is uh, further out, but right. we are the closest uh, resident. Right. Uh, you're on the you're corner of Stirrup Brook yeah. and Bartlett yeah, Street. Yeah, right. Okay. So that's not affecting for no matter what whatsoever. It's not going to be affected by any um, water. You go up yeah, and then you go back down. Right. Um, but it goes back down and back up again by the high school. So they're kind of. That's part of the, the purview of the Groundwater Advisory Committee is to make sure that since we are in a groundwater protection overlay district, we don't basically pollute the water. And so there are mechanisms in place, you know, whether it's sediment control during construction or whether it's oil and grease separation on the property you know, using water quality inlets, catch basins, and, and uh, infiltration basins. Do they inspect the water advisory? Do they inspect the uh, regular basis of our whatever? As part of the DEP's last DEP, Department of Environmental Protection, has a mechanism in place so that you know, the owner of the property has to maintain all those water quality structures that are placed on the property. And so you know, each of those catch basins have to be cleaned on a yearly basis. And any um, oils and greases or anything that may be captured within the water quality inlets, they have to be removed as well. So those, those are all uh, stormwater treatment. That uh, needs to be maintained, and, and that's a requirement of the DEP is, is to maintain those structures. So, the okay, DEP definitely they will inspect once a year or how often? The, <laughs> the uh, applicant is required to provide her annual report on the operation and maintenance of the stormwater system to, uh, as a result of the order of conditions issued by the Conservation Commission. The Conservation Commission is the local board that institutes the uh, requirements of the Department of Environmental Protection. That's what Pat, uh, Robert's referring to as the DEP. Okay. So they require the local commission to require annual reports. So Teresa, if I can just add something about the noise. The, um, specifically in the town's bylaw, we do have a section about performance standards. And, um, and if, if anyone has their bylaws, page 47 that I'm 
referring to. But the, um, as far as noise, uh, specifically with industrial uses, having an impact on residential uses, you're, you have a condition that is, you know, um, telling the developer that they have to be in compliance with this, that they're going to do, again, that ambient level um, study. And then um, by, by the zoning bylaws, they can go up to no more than five decibels over that ambient level. And um, so that's, that's very specific in the bylaw. Um, and then the, if I can, Teresa, just before I go through the conditions with um, Robert, you, I, I realized that in my draft um, decision, I had the old, um, I referenced the old site, the 31.8 acres. What's the acreage on this one? The ten that came off on the A and R, correct? Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's it's plus or minus in the decision. So tw uh, twenty one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> 173970. Oh, excuse me, I'm not. 24.65. All right, thank you. Ma'am, were your questions answered? Yes, but about the noisy and even she mentioned about the ambience, the five, and some, some numbers. But is there something that we can control it before they start the whole building construction is going on? Or is it everything is all build, building has been done? There's nothing the resident could complain about it because you have the North Bar by law, they did allow. Well, no, it, it definitely, if, if I mean, if residents. It, know um, think that the noise is excessive to them or or have a particular issue that you know for some reason they're out there on a Saturday night or a Sunday or something then you absolutely call the town hall you know it would either be my office or the building department um, during construction so and there's very specific hours through their earthwork permit when they can do the construction and then as far as the operation when there's a tenant in there um, the um, the, the, the bylaw is what governs them, that they're, we're requiring them to do a sound level test before they do any construction. And then, and then once, you know, the, we don't know who the occupant is going to be um, at this point. So we don't, we don't know how many trucks are going to be involved. Uh, but, but it's an allowed use in, in that zoning district. Um, off hours, if there's an issue with, with noise, then you would call the police department and then they would let us know that the following day. That doesn't make a difference if we call the police noise has been already made and call the police the, po make the police difference. department are aware that they can't start before 7 o'clock. And in the winter time, some contractors like to start their equipment at 6 o'clock and let it run for an hour or 45 minutes so that it's warm and ready to go at 7 o'clock. That's not allowed. To hear the trucks running before 7 o'clock, call the police department and they will go down and tell them to turn the trucks off and they will let us know and then we will follow up with the owner of the project because, uh, that over 24 hour that's operation that's during, during construction during the construction but during the construction the is, uh, the, the is done then the, there is a uh, restricted uh, hours once the business is done then they'll have to work within the bylaw but the bylaw does allow 24 hour use Question. So, is it in the permit that they have to do this baseline noise test prior to? Okay, so there will be a baseline yes. ambient noise test per, done in advance of any operation being done. So, if there's a problem, we can go back and it could be tested again to see if it's above that 5% over ambient noise. Absolutely. And, and, we, and we've had, we have done that with um, one 
two, two properties, I think. One, one property that I'm definitely aware of, this was several years ago, but um, you know, it abutted a residential neighborhood and there were issues at night and it turned out that um, it, it was just a matter of them changing some baffles on their, you know, equipment that was on the roof, the air, um, the air conditioner. But we were able to, you know, talk about how that it was above what they were allowed because we had done, had required that they do that, that um, level testing to begin with. Sir, did you have a question? Yes. Um, I said, I was very clear on the left side of the corner, by the red line on the left. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah we planned. Yeah, yeah, we planned that way. Yeah. This, what is uh, what's the other point? That's for excess soil. As part of when, when they do the earthwork on this property, there's a lot of topsoil that can't be used because of the building and the paving areas. So that excess topsoil, they're stockpiling it, putting it over there, and either transporting it off-site or they'll spread it on the on oh, okay. unused area. Oh, okay. so that'll just eventually just be revegetated. For the temporary, temporary reasons for the reasons. Okay. Any, any other question? You good? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have. Um, Given that this has already been approved once and then extended a whole bunch of times, we do have a proposed draft decision already. Um, so I think my recommendation, if nobody else has any questions or comments, is that we take just a few minutes to read through it. And then as planning board, we'll vote on whether to allow the application before us. And then in terms of the specific decision that's been provided to us, whether we want to make any modifications to it, um, aside from the acreage. And then Kathy can go through it. Um, with us and tell us specifically what's changed between the last time and this time, but let's just give it a quick read, okay? Same as before in 2009. With the having condition right there. Yeah. Anticipated groundwater flow to the north. That I can stop there. That's that's correct. No, oh, you can take the whole thing out. I think you can take the whole thing out. I'll take all. Just take three out. I can just take three out. Yeah. Okay. There's some wording in here about it discharging to Bartlett, I think, at some point, going along the aqueduct. Groundwater. The, um, if, if, you're, if you're looking at the third condition in the decision, yeah. we're going to take that out. Okay. Because that, they, they've, um, they've taken off that piece of property and put it onto another plot. Okay. Mm -hmm. If that's the one that... I have not so I had it here, and I have not so much. Okay. Mm 
I'm just looking to see if I say Bartlett anyplace else. Anthony. I think that was it. it was number three. We're talking about Bartlett and Honda. What did I say Bartlett on something? Um, Make sure that Gary and Anthony are done. Hold on one second. Oh, I'm sorry, just to stir up brick real quick. No, I don't think that's the thing. The stuff is brought it. Where's that? 3.1.2. Yeah. Yeah. We should come back before the board. Great. All right, on the first page, Anthony, yeah. or the page two. I just didn't know if this had anything to do with it. Oh, oh, you're in there. there. Oh, okay. I thought you were in the decision. Okay, no. Sorry. This is, this talks about, let's take a look at the open second property. No, no, that's it. Yeah, that's, thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, um, does the decision incorporate the prior findings of the groundwater that were made back in 05? Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, and the two, two things. There is, um, in, in the, this revised or this draft that you have in front of you, um, the, obviously there's a couple, the acreage I have to change on the first page. Second page, there's, there'll be a reference. I don't have a date in there, but there's a reference to review letter that was received, you know, the, um, from the groundwater. So that that date will be in there. So that that um, and that's that the letter that we have. Yes. That yep. We that, to Rick. Okay. And that basically Fred references everything from the 2005 decision. Okay. And then, if you go on to um, page three into the text of the decision. Um, number three will be deleted, or I'm suggesting to be deleted. Um, this was, this I took right out of the original decision, but since that time, um, part of this lot has been broken off, and so this, this lot before you tonight is not in groundwater one, and that's what condition three references. So we're gonna get rid of condition three um, condition six, the, um, this really only makes a difference to us in-house, but <laughs> condition six is a standard condition that we put in all of the decisions about the as-built that needs to be submitted to the town upon completion. And we just have revised the language since 2005. So this just reflects our updated language. So it, the intent hasn't changed, but, um, and then, um, all of the conditions that relate to earth removal have been deleted because originally in 2005, I think as we, as we talked about in the beginning, the planning board used to, the, the earth removal was incorporated into the planning board's decision, but now it's separated out right. and it's before the earth work. They already have the earth work permit. All those decisions, all those conditions have been covered. And then the, um, the only other change is on um, condition 17. Uh, condition 17 talks about um, uh, requires some work to be done off-site on the street, on Bartlett Street and on uh, Cedar Hill Street. And since 2005, we have updated um, based on a plan that we received in 2015. Um, we have revised and expanded a little bit what the applicant's going to be responsible for. So um, I have to, the, the one thing I didn't add into 17 is just a reference to this memo that we have um, 
from uh, VHB, which is their traffic consultant. So I'm just going to make a reference in, in the beginning of 17 to this traffic memo, and then A through F is what came out of the traffic memo as far as what, what we want the applicant to be responsible for. Was the traffic study done recently? Um, it was done in 2015. Okay. It's not actually a traffic study well, as much as study. a recommendation yeah. of traffic line uh, striping and uh, roadway approach. It's the intersection. We're concerned right. about the intersection being wide open. They're going to narrow it up um, so that traf trucks can get in and out and passenger cars can get out in more safely. It's, um, it's been reviewed. It's, we're in basic agreement. We would want to make sure that DPW and police department are in agreement as well before we finalize it. But they've agreed to do it. Um, and it's been kind of hanging for a number of years, right. waiting for this site to be developed. Is are, does this will number 17 incorporate all of VHB's recommendations? Yes, yes, it, it does. Okay, yeah. but we're still waiting on approval from. We will because it's in the town road. We want to make sure police and uh, DPW are in agreement that they all meet the town standards as well. So we will work with them in the town road. Okay. But this gets it committed to them to do. Okay. So, and was this what we talked about way back when Federal Express was coming in, the work done by um, Cedar Hill and Bartlett, that intersection there? Yep. So this is sort of taking all that work that was supposed to be done then yep. and actually right. saying it's got to be done before we can give yep. you. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then, and I just want to reiterate, especially for Carrie and Anthony, that um, typically, you know, th this is an unusual spot that we're in, and I know Teresa went through that as, as well as Scott did, but um, I typically do not hand you a draft decision <laughs> before we've even had a chance to review the application. So tonight's unusual. Um, typically what the process is is that, you know, you would go through the, the hearing process, um, and then you would talk about conditions. I would draft it. And then, and then you would, you know, take a look at it. Right. So, were there comments on the draft decision from Amy? Yeah, I had a question on number five. Sure. Go condition five yeah, or uh, finding? Decision. It's under the decision. Yeah, condition. And um, it talks about toxic or hazardous materials. And I hate to like allow that to begin with before we even know what's coming in in the materials. Can there be a condition that if there are toxic or hazardous materials, it would have to come back before the board? That's not how the bylaw is, is written. Yeah. If the, you're, you're incorporating a groundwater permit with them tonight, yeah. and so the, there may not be any toxic or hazardous materials, um, but this is kind of a standard condition that we put in that if, you know, it, per the bylaw, that if it's determined that what they're, and Fred can probably explain this in a little more detail, but if it's determined that it's not more detrimental than what's already there, then then that goes under staff review. If it's considered to be more detrimental, then they have to come back to the board. Well, so that's already in there now. So that's, that's correct. In, anything right. that's, that's, correct. So that's so already in your It went to the groundwater advisory committee without a tenant. So they don't have any expectation that any uh, toxic or hazardous material will be stored, manufactured, or uh, disposed of on site. So the groundwater's recommendation is that nothing be allowed. But in the event that something is required, once they do have a tenant that's accessory to the use, then the bylaw allows for the building inspector, the town engineer, and the town planner to make sure that if it is more hazardous to the groundwater, then they have to get a special permit to do so. So it would have to come before the board? It would come, it would. Yeah, it would, go, it would go to the Groundwater Advisory yeah. Committee for a recommendation as to how to mitigate and handle that material, and then it would come to you for approval because you would be amending this special permit. And, and that's that, the bad. That's where it's the groundwater could say no, you can't. They could say no if the mitigation that's proposed to protect the groundwater supply from the storage or the handling of this material isn't to their satisfaction. They could say no or they could make them go back and work it. It usually involves containment. Um, if there's a 50-gallon drum, say, or a 500-gallon drum, then they would require a, a containment area where if that were to spill, that all of that area, that material could be contained within uh, the building and couldn't wash out into the parking lot and get into the drainage system, and the, that floor might be coated with this special material that couldn't be eaten through by whatever chemical it is. Um, 
It also includes storage of any sprinkler water that might fall in that portion of the building if the material were to spill and the building were to catch on fire. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff that goes into the review um, by the groundwater committee before they would make a recommendation to you. So if it was a big warehouse and they wanted to store all hazardous material? Then they <laughs> would have to retrofit the building to contain all that material plus the sprinkler water uh, that would be uh, put on the fire until the fire department got there. It might be half an hour, 45 minutes. All the sprinkler heads would be calculated to the volume of water that would be dispersed. That, along with the materials that they store within the building, all need to be contained within the building. We recommend that they have a tenant before they go to the groundwater committee because retrofitting an existing building after it's been built is much more difficult than doing it while it's under construction. This is not the case here. If they find a tenant before they finish the building, they could come back and modify the building at a reasonable cost. Either way, they're required to come back. Okay. I just have one more question about um, how you talked about how you're taking all the soil off and putting it on that area to the side. Um, and it just reminds me of a company on Barefoot Road. You, you know where I'm talking about, Fred, right? In Iron Mountain, where they have that big mound. Mm -hmm. I thought that was their septic system, but you said no, it's just. No, that, that Barefoot Road project actually was uh, two phases, and that material was pushed off from the first phase that went into construction and was pushed off onto the other portion of their site uh, to be stockpiled until they figured out what they're going to do with the rest of the building. So is phase two not happened on that, sir? Excuse me? Is the second phase just not happened? It has not. Okay. Yeah. So is there, does the, sorry, I completely interrupted you. Go ahead. But I'm just saying it's pretty ugly when you drive by it. I thought it was a, an enormous mound for a septic system, and it's just sort of sitting there, and it's been there for a while. So does Earthworks require that, it, that this mound be taken down and no, spread? No, not that it be taken down, just that it be stabilized so that it can't wash mud onto adjoining properties, and that site on Barefoot Road does have grass growing on it. It's stabilized. It's not washing away or causing a, a problem. The, the Earthwork Board is really about stabilizing the site um, after construction. And if in the bond that's required for Earthwork is it required in the event that the applicant were to completely devastate the site, cut all the trees, pull all the stumps, and then walk away. We have enough money to bulldoze the material that's stockpiled and hydro seed it to the point it would be take growth and wouldn't wash off into the wetlands or a neighbor's property or back out into the street. So back to my question, which uh, we didn't discuss this at design review, and I'm sure that there would have been comments. Do you foresee that being high or how high is it going to be like or is it going to be just fairly level or is it going to be so the original uh the original requirements from the earth work requirements in town is not to remove any soils from a property mm -hmm. one of the benefits of this revised permit uh relaxes that obligation so that we can remove um uh, materials from the site which we're trying to do to anyone this is you know good usable topsoil, so we are trying to do that uh, with with the excess material so that when we're done, it will be as low and minimized as, as possible. We need to stockpile there because we are moving soil and we're gonna have to put some soil back mm -hmm. on the rest of the, the property at, as, as we complete the work as well. So um, in the end, I don't know exactly what height, we're trying to minimize that and it will all be reseeded to regrow again and, and left natural. The earthwork permit required, requ in the past, required them to stockpile all topsoil until the project was complete, and then it could be determined to be excess. The new permit uh, that was issued recently for the site relaxed that a little bit, as Scott indicated, that they still have to stockpile it until the project is complete or until a determination is made that how much they need to complete the project, and then anything that's excess above that with my approval, can be removed from the site. Okay. That answer your question? Yep. Uh, questions on this side regarding the draft? No. Nope. Okay. Kathy, you have anything else you want to add before I look for a vote on this? No, nope. thank you. Okay. And no other discussion by the board? Nothing else from the applicant? Okay. 
So we have before us a um, application for a special permit for 301 Bartlett Street and a proposed decision with amendments. Would anybody like to make a motion to approve the application and issue the decision with the discussed amendments? Anybody? A so moved would be good. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? No? no. All no. in favor? Who made the motion? I'm sorry. Oh, Anthony. Anthony. We're going to yeah. give one of the new members the yeah. opportunity. Anthony did. <laughs> yeah. All right. He's All in favor yeah. of issuing the decision? Any opposed? Yeah. No. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Thank you yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. You can always blame the lawyers yeah. for mucking up the works. <laughs> 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 Thank Roberts. Off to another meeting. Right. <laughs> and we um before you start the next hearing, we yeah. we usually bring up a recycling bin. <laughs> So you, you don't have to take this home with you, but um, you can just put it on the bottom of that tray tonight, or on the cart when we leave, if you don't want to bring it home. We always have a permanent record here at the town hall. Okay, so the next application is public hearing for zero Bartlett Street, special permit, sign plan approval, and special permit for groundwater protection overlay district. The applicant again is the Gutierrez Company, and so we have the interesting uh, uh, situation here of having a, a <coughs> building project um, where we're building this first uh, warehouse building and then following after that we would do building another another uh, warehouse project as well. What uh, Dave, oh, again, Scott Weiss with the Gutierrez Company, Wayne Keith, Aaron, Dave Robinson, Melanie Major. Um, uh, this project um, is located uh, basically off of Hayes Memorial Boulevard in, in Marlboro, um, which is located here off of a driveway that comes in, crosses the town line, and would put a, uh, a um, another warehouse distribution uh, or a light manufacturing facility in this location. This building is 167,000 square feet, so slightly smaller. The idea is to do the, basically the same design, um, although you'd never see the two buildings together, the same design uh, as the first building. It's slightly smaller and there's a notch on it, but it will look uh, essentially the same. Um, uh, the project, this, this, little, this uh, plan shows where Bartlett Street is and Hayes Memorial Drive. This is the 301 Bartlett uh, building that we just talked about. So down uh, Bartlett, up Hayes Memorial, you would get to uh, this location here, which is north of the aqueduct. So that shows generally the location. And then uh, Dave can... Uh, go through this project. This is a brand new project before <coughs> you, so this is uh, first time you're seeing any of this. We're happy to go through all the details, um, and we do understand that there's still a couple of outstanding questions, both on groundwater and conservation, and we're not looking for you to make any snap decisions uh, on this project uh, tonight. So, uh, Dave, you. Take it away. Absolutely. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, as Scott mentioned, we're proposing a 167,000 square foot um, industrial warehouse building. Now, unlike the 301 project, this project does access uh, Hayes Memorial Drive in Marlboro, um, and we are also proposing um, parking, a reserve parking area, truck and trailer storage area, additional dolly, uh, dolly pad area for long-term truck storage, parking to the north, and all of the drainage on site is handled by catch basins with uh, deep sumps and hoods and is discharged to these two large surface um, detention basins, which both have sediment four bays. 
um, at the request of the Groundwater Advisory Board. We are um, anticipating to install uh, proprietary stormwater separators um, to, to treat the water prior to discharge to the sediment four bays, which will then overflow into the basins. Um, we um, in terms of utilities, um, we're proposing to discharge sewer um, out to Hayes Memorial Drive in Marlboro, so not within the, um, the town of Northboro. In fact, all of the utilities are going to be derived from Hayes Memorial Drive. Um, we're also proposing landscaping along the entire length of the drive, uh, trees, bushes, etc., which were reviewed with the design review committee and along the front to provide relief from Hayes Memorial Drive, although it's not very easy to see the site uh, from the road. It's fairly well tucked into the woods um, on its own. Um, I think that pretty much covers the general gist of what we're trying to the existing sewer line. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, good point. Uh, let's go. Um, there's an existing force main, which we did go up to the field and locate last week, which handles the sewer flows from the Algonquin School, which is located right up here. Um, so we know where that force main is. We're most likely going to have to move it slightly to work around our utilities, put a new, nice, dedicated easement um, around it. And then we also are going to most likely parallel that force main with our own force main from the building building set back set down about 10 or 12 feet from grades at the road so we have to pump all that sewer up and into Marlboro um, at this time I'd like to open up discussion um, I have a letter for you from the groundwater advisory committee um, similar to the other project they did recommend approval similar conditions um, there was no tenant and there was no specific toxic or hazardous material known at the time, so same condition uh, that they'll have to come back. Um, the committee does not anticipate that they would have to go back, although I, as a town engineer and working with the DPW, would recommend that the hearing be continued so that we can work out the details of the sewer line. At the time the plan was submitted, the sewer line wasn't shown on the plan. Um, our estimated location of it from what we knew put it right in conflict with a couple of retaining walls and some cuts that would compromise the cover over that pipe so we had asked them to locate it show it on their pipe on their plans so that we could talk about how to best accommodate their project and keep our sewer line intact um, they've indicated they located it we haven't really looked at it and compared notes as to what should be done so that needs to be addressed um, before the plan could be approved so that the plan that is approved is also the plan that gets built and there's no conditions that require modification that everybody has the same expectation of where the sewer line is going to be. Um, we are certainly uh, agreeable to relocating the sewer line as David had indicated. Um, that is a viable option because it's a forced main. There's no specific grade that it needs to maintain so that I don't see that as an issue, just a matter of work out the details of where it would be. Okay. This, this project has not been to the Earthwork Board yet. No, it has not, so it's still it's pending Earthworks. It, will, it generally comes at the end. Again, the previous project was rather unique in the whole process of the way we do things. Given that the entrance to this building comes from, emanates from Marlboro, whose fire department services that building? I believe the fire chief would say that um, they have a or community. Uh, well, uh, um, I forget I what, they call what it's it. called too. But mutual aid. Yeah. Whoever gets there first. They okay. Would, would go, both so they're would both going to be called, but they okay. both would be called. But mutual aid would cover um, a project of this size with if there were a fire. Just to clarify, um, and you can point out where the city town line is. Um, the entirety of the building is in North Northboro, so for all the sort of benefits and obligations go to North Northboro in terms of tax dollars. Um, and I believe in discussions when we met with the uh, fire chief, 
I see Mr. Frederico shaking his head. Yes, be right behind you. In agreement. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to make him mad. <laughs> um, has the fire department reviewed the planes? Do you know? Yes, we. Um, there is a. Um, I see a letter from them. There. Um, yeah, we do have a. Um, did they make the or were they happy? <laughs> the applicant has been before the Conservation Commission. Um, that hearing's been continued. I believe that they are working with the Conservation Commission in Marlboro because there is some wetlands um, near the entrance to Hayes Memorial. Um, those things are all being worked on, so it's a natural thing that this might be continued. Um, I don't see it here, but there, there is one, and um, we'll certainly send around copies if that has been done. But there, 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 there was, oh, here it is. Um, if your name is basically in favor of it, or, or approved it. But. I have reviewed the special permit site plan approval dated April 2, 2018, for the above named property, and I have no concerns at this time. We, we did try to replicate the same kind of layout. Mm -hmm. There's hydrants proposed at each corner of the building. It is a large building. Um, with four hydrants. Three sided access, at, uh, accessibility by fire trucks all over the around and can turn around into various areas as well. So um, the applicant came before design review and, and this project was a little easier because it was sort of a duplicate of 301, um, similar building, similar landscape. Again, we asked the applicant to remove a lot of the trees from out back because we're looking for clear uh, truck radius to be able to, um, you know, for snow removal and they figured that, you know, we were looking for in the worst case scenarios about snow build up there and so we asked them to remove a lot of the trees. We asked them to put them out front. And then there were too many trees out front with such a small island, and we figured that was not really productive. So we worked on that. So landscape we worked on quite a bit, and so it's out in the front, but not in the back, primarily because of snow removal and snow storage. Um, same identical building that is gonna be at 301, so signage and colors and materials were all duplicated in that point. And then uh, <coughs> we talked a little bit about traffic flow on where would the trucks go, and. There's really no determination whether they'd either come locally because going down there, the most likelihood is they go down that, what's the street that they're coming in? Hayes Memorial. Hayes Memorial, and they'd more likely go out towards 495 than they would go down Bartlett Street to Route 20. Right. Um, so we didn't really, and it wasn't within our jurisdiction to put a sign out on a, uh, right. request a sign out on a Marlboro Road. Um, so. Yeah, I don't know which way we would tell them to go. Yeah, we don't know where to tell them to go, whether it was left or right. Because if you tell them to go left, they go out to Route 20. You don't really want them to go out to Route 20 if you Unless don't. they're going to take a right and go up to 495. Exactly. Yeah. So that was one of the things that we didn't right. focus That's as much on. Spot. Yeah. And we we also discussed, or one of the members pointed out that um, if they were to take a left out of the site it, to get to 495, you know, meaning go up Hayes Memorial and then you know take a right onto 20, with the new apex development, um, you know, if anyone has experienced that, there's you know a tremendous amount of new traffic associated yeah. with that so we figured they're going to learn on their own really quick that they're not you know they're not going to go that way they're going to go out to 495 through the um uh, yeah. yeah yeah so this site was not conducive to any type of signage for traffic flow okay. but can we still put it as a condition that they go out through Marlboro so they're not if they are big trucks because we don't even know yet then they're not going through North Brown onto 290 and you know, well, it seems like all the trucks we are can't on tell there. We've said we didn't want them to go on to Route 20. We can't yeah. tell them they have to use another town. Yeah. yeah. You can't. We, we don't have the authority because they're coming in and out from another town. They're, they're, we don't have the authority. Like, Northboro doesn't have the authority to tell Marlboro, you know, what. Because the building was in there. Yeah. Town. You, could, you could certainly put a condition in, and then we could go to Marlboro if this was allowed, and Marlboro would say, no, all the traffic has this to go is, you know, the right. other way. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. A, yeah. Right. I, I think the state, the DOT, has some requirement that yeah. says you can't force. Right. One town. From one town to another. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Do you know how many truck bays there are going to be? I know in the design it said 
you're unsure yet so far? Um, I forget the exact count. There's probably about uh, we show 48. Side, 48. Uh, is it that many? 30. 38. I think it's 30. There's, there's 10 back here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So 38 truck bays. Against the yeah. building. Well, yeah. that's not really a truck bay, it's just trailer storage. But yeah, yeah. 38 bays. And then yeah. 10 right. trucks, truck trailer storages, but that number may change as the architect. No, I think we worked that out. Is that the, we replicated it's 38 the most that can be there? Is that, that's your highest number? Okay. Okay. Any other questions on this end? I guess most of my questions are because I'm always conservation. I mean, a lot of it is wetlands and habitat. Right. And there's still, all that's <laughs> still open. Right. Okay. Uh, the um, design review thought that both buildings, because they have a massive roof, would be great for solar, but we talked to the applicant. They are solar ready and being built for today's standards, but there was no guarantee that they would be solar there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And Bob wants to give up. Just a point of information. Sure. Mm -hmm. New building codes and the new energy codes. Building buildings of a certain size or bigger, okay, they are required to be solar ready. Mm -hmm. Not that the panels have to be installed, yeah. the roof has to be able to account for the added weight for the solar panels in the future. Um, some of the electrical conduits and things need to be kind of in place and ready so that when it comes time, if the time comes, to retrofit the building, you don't have to retrofit the building itself. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's a requirement that's generally built in to any new construction. Okay. Any questions? I, the only thing, I, so I, I don't know the answer to this, and Fred, you might, or Kath, you might, but I assume that there's weight restrictions on Boundary and Solomon that would restrict trucks from going out that direction towards 290, or not? I don't, uh, probably the bridge on Boundary has a... Well, the bridge on Boundary, I believe, is in Marlboro, and it was uh, recently rebuilt mm -hmm. uh, within the last three or four oh, years. That, that's true. So there would be nothing to prohibit them from using the Not as far as I know, no. Okay. Um, so a lot of residents in that area use the Starbrook trails. I'm curious, is there any impact on those trails? I can't tell with all the um, dotted lines. Is that something way off to the side? So or? the trails, if you're thinking about the ones accessed through the high school. That's right, yeah. yeah. So the, the high school trails are all on the other side oh, of this property, uh, okay. on the back of the high school side. Got uh, it. Because um, there's Stir Up Brook, that's right. sort of separated. You'd have yep. to cross the brook to get over here. Got it. Okay, you know, thank a lot you. of those trails are on the other side, the high school side. Okay, thank you. Where's the nearest residential of butter? Do you know how far that person is? I, you know, it's, it, there's really dense woods here. There's the Stirrup Brook, and then you have the Algonquin High School over here. The nearest abutters are Mr. and Mrs. Kemp. I, I don't know. It's just a little bit further than. It's, yeah. So, again, this is a little bit further west, uh, excuse me, east than the 301 Bartlett, and you're up around the curve over here. Yeah, we are somewhere. not on Bartlett. We yeah, are Bartlett. like a, sort of a setback, right. so yep. that, that's why we might But the it. high school, the tennis court, the building itself is here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> just to give you a little bit of a reference, it's really light, but it's underneath the, mm -hmm. on that image okay. a little bit. And all the... <coughs> The fields and everything are all through here, and the trails are all back here. I know the cross-country route is back here. Uh, it pretty much uh, coincides with the property line on the rear here, so it runs all. Yeah, because you can see the, the front of my house is the brook, so oh, it's okay. running. So that means that we are like the closest set back there. Oh, so. No, that's. I don't, the brook, I don't, know, I don't we, think the brook goes the here. The brook off. goes right. further it that goes, way. It yeah, it probably beyond this. It, it doesn't come this way, but that's the brook, and, and then it goes that way. Further okay. west that way. <clears throat> across is down by. Uh, oh, it's just before Lyman oh. Street by Par Bartlett Pond. If, yeah. you, if you come out Lyman Street from Westboro, you take a left and you go right over yeah, the culvert there. Awesome.
Uh, yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, you have a mail. You have a subset of mail from your office. Am I the only one who got a mail or listened to the resident? You mean the, um, the oh, notice of the hearing? I did, well, I don't know who who else received a notice of no, hearing. Uh, there were there's several people. That, uh, it's everyone within 300 feet of the site. So um, it included. Um, the, uh, I mean, I can I can check for you, but I yes, there's there's yeah, many. Re so we are in yes. Yep. States, yep. So there. Yep. There were there were other residences. There's re uh, residences on Lyman Street, um, and then elsewhere on Bartlett Street. So, that were notified. So just to clarify, the 300 feet is based on this entire property right. all the way from here, right. even though the development is, is I mean, that's what, seven, well, eight hundred feet? Is, this is 600 feet. Yeah, we have. So that's 600. So, so, it's so what's, what's that more. on this end of the, a little bit like a medium shade? That's actually what's a good point. What's on that side? That's a good point. What's, what's going to be on what's that this? side? What's this? There's nothing planned. Too much further all away. All woods. Yeah. So it, you're not going to knock it down all the trees on that. You, you were saying that it is for you to your There's nothing currently planned there. We do own that land yeah. Uh, yeah. as well, but we're not at this point planning and we don't have anything planned for that for that location. So there will be tree will be still there, or the trees will be right. still there. Right, they remain. That's right. That's not a stockpile area or anything like that. Um, that, so yeah, that's not to say that people. no development will happen there in the future. Yes, right. that's what right. What he's saying is right now yeah. there's nothing yeah. planned. Yeah. Yeah. But they're a development company. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't have a plan for it right now. It has been in various iterations planned for development, but we don't have anything planned at the moment. There were 15 abutters entitled to notice that received notice of this hearing. You're the only one who showed up. So. <laughs> I have been cleared by the street and see last street mm -hmm. after 25 years. Uh, after April came in and Peter's came in, the city of street is terrible. I have to dance with my car every morning to avoid power. Right. It's yeah. terrible. Right? Can, we have, can we have anyone driving the city of street? Right. So, so part of the first decision that we signed is going to require the company, the developer, to do some improvements at that intersection area. Not, they don't, they're not going to be required to pave the entirety of Cedar Street, but at the very beginning of it, where the intersection begins, they're going to have to do some improvements right there. So at least the potholes at the very beginning of the Cedar Street intersection will be cured. As for the remainder of Cedar Street, We'll have to see. How much of that is that all Marlboro or is yeah. it South? It's Marlboro. It, yeah, Not South. yeah. The 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 majority the, the up to Scholastic. Yeah, it's a majority. No, is North Bro, and but then Marlboro, and then it goes into South Bro. Right, right. Yeah, yeah but that that you know depends on you say some part of the improvement, but what kind of a real improvement that could be done. Also, that's down here, Bartlett Street to Cedar Street. There's a down here. Mm -hmm. So if the truck runs down, then it's a dangerous intersection it will become. Right. So that's a very busy area. So are you planning to put blink light or do, are, are you planning to do something or you just? Uh, uh, there's the plans are traffic improvement plans. They're striping, some signage, a little bit of widening, uh, guardrail near the intersection to make it make more room for people who want to turn right and people who want to go straight to get by. Um, there's no traffic lights proposed, but there is widening and traffic improvement signage and, and such. So definitely there is a widening. A little bit of a widening so that cars can make that turn onto Cedar Hill and then other cars can go straight. And there's a stop line and some some striping that's going to happen in the road to make it more clear as to where people are supposed to stop because when they come out of Cedar Hill, they quite sometimes don't stop till they get across the street. You can see there's a there's been cars just run right across. So that there's some guardrail in that area as well as some signage and striping that's going to happen. So who's the first part when you come off of Bartlett Street is in Northboro. 
and it changes to Marlboro near that Scholastic Book Fair building, which is the first driveway on the right as you head down uh, Cedar Hill towards the railroad tracks. And then uh, just beyond the railroad tracks and that light, I think then it turns into Southboro. Yeah, that is Southboro. But we are concerning that that area, even the Northboro part, it's a real extreme dangerous because just to try to avoid the tunnel. It's, it's seriously deep and it's not, it's, it's just randomly everywhere, but there is no intention, no town shows to repair them. That means this a trucking company, we believe, uh -huh. because of the trucking company, we have uh, so many trucks that are running that way and, and it just got so worse. Well, the town is responsible for maintaining its own roads and the town, uh, Northboro, I'm not sure about Marlboro or Southboro, but Northboro does have a pavement management plan where all the roads and towns have been evaluated and rated and they are on a list to be repaired as they hit a certain grade and so that the town can maintain a minimum, you know, 75 or so grade on each road and then the roads that are on the lower end grade-wise are repaired first and the ones on the higher end are, are put off for further years. I don't know where Cedar Hill is in that, in that program. I can talk to the DPW director and ask him to take a look at the potholes and see if there's some minor repair that can be done, but it's not really an issue for the developer. There's, there's a little bit of widening that goes with the Bartlett Street side, not the Cedar Hill Street side. Yes, yeah, so Cedar Hill Street's quite wide at the entrance there. Yeah, but from Bartlett to Cedar, the, 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 you get into, get into the Cedar, it's like a tree side there is a blocking, so you have to clear out a lot of trees to, so the, whoever the, the sedan will come out, we have to clear you to see the I'm, I'm happy to show you the plan that we have in the office that they've presented as a conceptual plan. I don't recall any trees being cut in order for the improvements to be made. I'm happy to show you the plan, but it's, it's not, I don't believe it involved tree cutting. It was more about defining the intersection, putting in some striping and some signage so that people knew where they were supposed to be, and more alerting of the traffic coming from Cedar Hill onto Bartlett so that they, they knew there was a stop coming up because speed is a factor and people are not stopping. Well, we want the traffic to go to Marlboro, so we want to make it as safe as possible for those trucks to make that turn onto Cedar. So in, in order for you to continue this, um, even though I don't think there's any outstanding questions from the planning board, but um, at the request of um, staff, you know, through the town engineer and DPW, um, you, you would need to um, determine what your summer meeting schedule is going to be. Um, you know, typically you don't meet, you know, two Tuesdays in July, and two, or June, July, or August. So, you know, if, if you want to, in order to continue this, you know, we've got to come up with a... What's the ETA on completion with the other boards? Do you know? So we are going to continue the um, conservation. conservation commission meeting to your July meeting. Right. The um, conservation commission meets the f second Monday of each month. The applicant has some issues to resolve in order to get back to conservation. They're not going to be ready for Monday, which is the jo June meeting, so they're going to ask, I believe, for an extension to the July meeting. It should be somewhere in July. Their meeting would be on July 9th. Somewhere around then, I expect that the issues that you have with the sewer line can be worked out. Um, Whatever is going on with natural heritage and conservation should be fully resolved by then. Um, so you could look at the third... Tuesday in July. Is there any other any other boards that we need approval from besides so You don't you don't need groundwater design review. Sure Groundwater is not expecting them to return. Okay. Um, yeah, design review is already done. And then earthwork would follow planning board. They could okay. apply, but earthwork prefers to know that the project has been through your board and has approval and that it's okay. not going to change. Okay. So they could apply for a later meeting in July or even one in August. 
did we rule out a second meeting in June or would that be too soon anyway? I think it would be, well, two things. I think it would be too soon. Um, and and I'm, not he I'm not here the last two weeks of, okay. of June. June. Okay, so we're looking then at when in July? I'm, I'm suggesting the third Tuesday because there'll be a conservation the second Monday. And I did not bring my phone, but um, 17. No, if I can see that far, July 17th. 17. Right. But I, you know, again, I have no idea people's vacation okay. schedules. Well, we're gonna find out right, right. Now. <laughs> and you don't have to stick to a Monday. I mean, to a Tuesday. Tuesday. In the summertime, it's a little yeah. easier. Um, Amy, July 17th. I can do it. Michelle. I'm probably good. Yep. You're probably good. Here. 17th of said? Yeah. Yes, I think I'm good. I may not be around. Oh, you want? Yes. You're good? Okay, so July 17 marks. Are you good with July 17? Of course, all the days. I remember, remember. One day, <laughs> and I have this meeting scheduled already. Oh. We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, I'll okay. Whatever I, I, well, I was going to say, you could send somebody in your stead. Wouldn't be you, but it's fine. I'm sure they'll represent well. So, okay. So then we need to make a motion to continue the hearing from tonight to July 17, 2018 at 7 p.m.? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there such a motion? Make that motion. All right. Amy <laughs> makes the motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. Yep. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Excellent. You're good. Right. Thank you very See much. See you guys back in July. I have a plan you want to send it to me by email. I can print it out. And I heard about that one. Isn't that funny? We can. It's two minutes for the thought, so. Okay. Do you know the time? Probably yeah. time. Two minutes. Really quick. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I need. Thank you. So much more. Yeah. You know what? I'm. I yeah. I'm at a conference tomorrow and Thursday, but I'm gonna try to make when we get done tonight. Get it done mm -hmm. and then get to recess. Great. Okay. I thought you'd okay. think that. Okay. I, I I'll, I'll text you. <laughs> okay. From the time I thought, so I thought you'd think that. Yep. Okay. okay. So, mm -hmm. Michelle. Okay. I just wanted the board to uh, think about this, and um, we could discuss it at future planning board meetings. But as we we're seeing this area being developed over on um, Bartlett Street, and I, I did talk about it um, to the board um, when Federal Express came in, and now we have two other properties that are being developed over there and which is the whole this is very attractive for um, warehouses and for the type of um, facilities that want to come in here i'd like the board to consider and kathy can um, guide us on this about a letter to the board of selectmen about start thinking about street lights it's a really dark street you can get solar powered lights now the technology is there I know it has to go through the Board of Selectmen, but if we could be on a proactive approach about saying, look, at here's an area of town that we just think is gonna burst in the next five to 10 years. Can we just start to think about street lights out there? Look at the technology about solar powered street lights. How can we get applicants to be um, part of their, um, you know, maybe possibly the applicant give some money, or whether we can ask it for it or not, an applicant install a street light, like we talk about installing a sidewalk anything like that. I think it's important for that area. I just don't want to lose the opportunity and get it all built out and then 10 years from now, five years from now, we said we should have had street lights out there. 
And I think um, with the technology here, we could get something that's solar powered that would not drain the town financially from it. And I just, I'd like to know if we could consider, if not this meeting, but in the next couple of meetings, a letter to the Board of Selectmen asking them to <clears throat> give it some thought about future. I know yeah, we'll talk I, about it at the master plan, but this is sort oh, of- no, I, And I can draft down. something for, for you, yeah. the board. Okay. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. You know how I feel about streetlights in those dark areas. I know how you feel about them. <laughs> I do, I do. Um, okay, so we have some consideration of minutes, and I know that you two weren't on the board, so I guess you get a pass. So, um, we have minutes from January 30th and February 6th in front of us. Um, have you guys both had a chance to review these? I read them. Okay. Um, briefly, but I, I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. And Amy, did you have changes no. that you no. haven't already sent? Okay, so these are quite detailed. These this are is, very detailed. Yeah. This is like a transcript of the hearing. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually that really is how good. As Debbie was were. printing them, <laughs> she said, "She's like, oh, Elaine went a little crazy." <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? This is it helpful to for us to write the de design review standards for this too. To go back and what did we talk about? Right. Remember, like Judy was talking about from the design review committee. Yeah, so this was a good one to make very detailed. Yeah, that's for sure. Because it talks about what people's concerns are and stuff. So this is good. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the January 30, 2018 minutes? I make a motion to approve approve the January 30th, 2018 minutes. Second. Okay. okay. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Excellent. And is there a motion to approve the February 6, 2018 minutes? I make a motion to approve the February 6, 2018 minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Right. We're just as detailed. Right. This is great. Um, it, now, we've got two more identified here. Do we have them? No, we don't. So we can cross um, those Elaine, off. Elaine uh, had <coughs> hoped that she was going to catch up on all of them. But, optimistic, but the ball game got in the way. Got it. Um, no A&Rs or lot releases tonight? No, no bonds tonight? No. Are we viewing the um, zoning amendments tonight? Oh, I just didn't know. I mean, I just wanted to, you know, if you wanted to touch base on them, but just the, the process is, you know, we're in the middle of the process, so they've been sent to the um, other, you know, necessary forms that we have to fill out for the Attorney General's office. That's been sent off to the Attorney General's <coughs> office, and then they have uh, 90 days to review them and get back to the town. And um, in the meantime, um, how zoning works in Massachusetts is the when it's approved at town meeting, it becomes effective immediately. And then if for some reason that the Attorney General you know, disagrees with um, a, a piece of one of our bylaws or the bylaw in its entirety, then, you know, the, the day that we get the denial from them is, you know, we go back to the old bylaw. But So okay. that's in the works, you okay. know, as far as with the AG's office. Okay. And then eventually we'll get a new book. Yes. Excellent. Yep, so that's all. I just wanted to touch base on that. That's all right. Then we have subcommittee updates and appointments. Mm -hmm. So we're being asked to reappoint Fred Philcox to the Earthwork Board? Yes. Yep. Fred, uh, as far as the Earthwork Board, um, that board is made up of um, s some of the members are appointees from existing boards, mm -hmm. and then some members are at large. And um, so Fred Philcox has been the planning board's appointee for a few years now. He's our designee. And, yes, and is interested in continuing. OK. Do we want to keep him? We do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> long, as long as he's willing to keep coming. <laughs> but he's an active participant looking out for the best interests of the town. He is. Okay. He is. So that's what matters. So is there a motion to recommend reappointment of Fred Philcox to the Earthwork Board? Someone. All right. Excellent. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Community preservation. Who's on community preservation? Is that Leslie? Uh, Leslie was the planning board designee. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any interest in it? And, and, who, and whoever wants to be on CPC, we have a meeting to, uh, Thursday. Uh, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> um, Which literally will be a 10 minute meeting. No, but right. I thought Anthony would be a good candidate. Anthony, would you like to serve on the <laughs> community preservation committee? Would serve as our, the planning board's designee? I would actually. All right, yeah. then. So we have a nomination for you. Does anybody want to fight for it? No? No? Okay. So is there a motion to approve Anthony? Do we have to do motions on this? Um, no? 
<laughs> not unless you want to fight amongst yourselves. But, yeah. Okay. All right. So Anthony, congratulations. That job is yours. Yeah. Open space. Who had open space? I do. Okay. You staying? Uh, yeah, I do like it. Okay. Love That's her job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd like to take groundwater if nobody objects to that. Excellent. I'm good for you, Teresa. Good for me. What are those meetings? I'm hoping they're at 4.30 or 5.30 in the morning. Because yeah. <laughs> that's my best time. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, they're on Tuesday, yep. um, the second Tuesday of the month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we try to fit it in between the two planning board meetings, which are typically the first and the third, and the fourth, as you know, is occupied by the ZBA. So yep. Tuesdays, Tuesdays are four. Tuesdays are perfect for me. Okay. And we meet at 7 o'clock unless we can squeeze in one at 6 o'clock try to move things along occasionally mm -hmm. there's a conflict with board of health or somebody right. who meets later and we will try to meet at six to get it out of the way before another board has to meet got it okay that's fine um when's the next meeting next actually uh there is no june zba meeting oh, so, oh sorry i didn't i didn't so, know which board you were talking about yeah. so we're water. talking about groundwater so there's no june zba meeting so therefore I haven't sent out the notice yet, but there's no June groundwater meeting. Oh, so if a there's a, it, they do they do meet <laughs> as needed, <laughs> and if there's no groundwater hearings, there's no petitions before either the planning board or the ZBA that require groundwater approval. They don't meet. No so okay. right now it would be the second Tuesday in July if okay. necessary. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Are you staying with design review? Um, yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, we've finally decided that we're meeting twice a month. Um, meeting in the mornings twice a month. We went back between mornings and nights. Um, we're happy to be fluctuate if we want to do nights, but yeah. So we're gonna we've we've scheduled at least four meetings throughout the summer because we're trying to work on the duplexes and we find that there are applicants coming before us and they take at least three meetings, if not four. Okay, great. Um, and Carrie, how would you like to do CMRPC? Do you know what that is? A little bit, Kathy. You explained it. Um, and what the meetings for those are typically? They they're quarterly. They um, I honestly don't know when they. I don't know if they. I think they start their fiscal year like all towns on July first. So I don't know if they go quarterly from there. But we get notices, and uh, you know, the, it, and it would come. Who was ever the rep, it would go to the rep also. Mm -hmm. But I remind people. And it's not um, yeah. it's it's not a, a lot of heavy lifting. Um, like I said, there are quarterly meetings, night meetings, and then there's an annual meeting. And um, the annual meeting includes dinner. I, <laughs> I generally um, try to to make those meetings too. So it's um, sorry, sorry, that was that wasn't No, that's all. I just. Okay, so um, all right, so you're good with that. Yeah, and it's I have, actually a really interesting um, yeah. one to you. I learned an awful lot about process and what other towns do, and like how the whole thing just works. Um, by serving on the CMRPC for a couple of years. So now I have a question: um, Is master plan part of a subcommittee? That receives appointments normally it is but it's already been filled um so right now we've got three members one of whom is george pember who is no longer on the planning board but he was our designee voted on by the planning board so i don't know that we should be revisiting that right now i can um we should maybe talk to town council to see if he has to be removed because I know that that was something that he was very dedicated to, so. Um, sure, I mean, I, I, can, I can check with town council. I know mm -hmm. um, that it, it, you know, it's typically worded that it's, you know, the planning board, um, it's usually worded like the planning board member or their designee. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I, I, right. I believe you're covered. Okay. So, you know, as far as. There's still a couple of open positions, I believe. There, there aren't. There it, it's, aren't. Someone pointed out to me that it was still listed like that okay. on the website. Those were from the um, um, Recreation Commission and the yeah. Historic District Commission. Okay. And and so they've since appointed. The Historic District Commission is going to share it <laughs> with two two people from the Historic District Commission, um, Norm Corbin and um, Alexandra 
uh, uh, what Molnar? What? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Is that how, Molnar? Yeah. And then um, the um, uh, Parks and Rec person is um, Dave Putnam. Um, he's a member of the Parks and Rec Commission. Is there any reason why we couldn't add a member? So we'd have three current planning board members on that committee and then George moved to a resident position that doesn't there, exist. There aren't any other positions on on that board. I mean, when it was set up, the, I mean, if you want me, I'm sorry, I just kind of, okay. You're I'll, <laughs> when it, I'll give you the evil eye when you're not. <laughs> when it was originally <laughs> set up, um, it, I mean, the, the, the planning board determined that it would be a 15 member committee um, and with three representatives from the planning board, um, which is which, which is very unusual. Usually, it's one or two on, on a master plan steering committee. Mm -hmm. um, so there's three members from the planning board, and then a, one member from a variety of other boards, and then I think there's three or five residents at large um, that are on that are on the committee. So it's been you know it, it's been determined. It was advertised. It, you know people were you know considered and interviewed some um, and then you know the, the committee has started you know they've met twice and then so far um, they'll be meeting a third time on June 12th and then I might as well go into the update on that if you don't mind go right ahead. and then um, and then June so the steering committee is going to meet earlier on June 12th in the evening and then June 12th is the first public um, all their meetings are public but sort of the first public event um, where it's a uh, I'm calling it more of a workshop or a charrette, but um, you know where we're anticipating. Well, w we hope you know that we have you know maybe at least 50 residents that that will attend. So, and that's being held at the middle school. Okay. Okay. And that's okay. 6:30. Yes, that the the committee is going to meet at 5:45, and then the um, the public um, participatory. <laughs> Um, workshop is 6.30 to 9. So Kathy, if um, the 15 member board, if, if someone from one committee that's appointed to that board can no longer sit, then they replace it with somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we will have a little changeover because there was a changeover in the Board of Selectmen, so there'll be a new member of that Board of Selectmen on that committee. They, I, I don't know if they've okay. appointed, I haven't been notified yet, I don't okay. know. If they have not appointed liaisons yet. Okay, so they're probably doing that at their next at okay. Monday's meeting. Have they not appointed anyone yet? Well, uh, Bill Pantazis was the appointee was. from the Board of Selectmen. I, I don't know if they're going to keep him as, as their representative or if they'll well, somebody new. Okay. I, I don't know. I actually will be at that meeting because I have to be there for another agenda item, but I, I don't know what they're going to do. Okay. So right. is so it possible to find out then what it jives with how it's set up? Just because it seems if it's a 12 to 18 month project, to keep someone that's no longer on that board who's taking a spot from the board, seems like. Um, well, honestly, it's not something that I have an issue with. Only because originally we were trying to make it one or two members from the planning board. We mm -hmm. added a third because there were three people who were very, very interested in having it. Um, I still feel as though the board is more than adequately represented by the two members that we have so I'm not personally inclined to advocate removing George from the position because he does bring a certain viewpoint to that committee that um, a lot of other members of this board may not bring um, but having said that I think that certainly we can look and see if it's a requirement that we have him removed or ask him to step down and if he does I would just ask that Maybe I take the op I'd be afforded the opportunity to speak to him about it before we just oust him all of a sudden right. on TV. Of course, it's not the way we should do things. The, it, and so. also, too, the the meetings are the they're open to the public. Right. I mean, anybody can attend. You know, Anthony's been attending those. Any anyone can attend the master plan steering committee meetings. Um, I mean, so far the, the meetings have been a little more structured, where you know the the consultant has had a a definite presentation for both of those meetings um, you know always with a public meeting versus a hearing you know there's the opportunity for the chair to say you know we're not going to take in any you know comment other than the committee members because it's just what fits on the agenda but I mean they are for, for anybody that's watching and, and for the board members I mean anybody can attend those meetings right so. 
And I think the point of having someone from these committees on it is that you go back to your committee. So I would come back to you guys, like Anthony will come back to us um, regarding CPC and say, mm -hmm. here's what's happening on CPC. I just want to let you guys know, do you have any feedback, right? You would do on your committee. And that's why I'm assuming, it, that's why I asked the question if someone stepped down and there wasn't anyone, like in the Board of Selectmen, if there's no one on the Board of Selectmen, I'm assuming they'd want to have someone on there to bring back the feedback of what's going on. We do have two people already who are going right. to be going back and forth. We already have to. Right. And so I just think it's important from each board to have somebody on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, election of officers, the chairmanship and the vice chairmanship of every year are up for grabs. So I would nominate myself, but I don't think I'm allowed to. All right. We'll nominate Teresa for the chair, okay. if you'll take it. I will. If if that's okay with everyone else. Yes. I'm Do you want to be chair, Amy? I know, oh, thanks. Okay. How about the, <laughs> you guys? <laughs> okay. And I yeah. would suggest Michelle continue to serve as the vice chair yeah. unless somebody else wants the vice chair no. position. Yeah. No. no. Okay. Okay. And then um, we've already scheduled our next meeting, and the next CBA meeting is June 26th. Uh, there, there won't be a meeting. There won't be one. Okay. Um, we, don't, we didn't have any applications filed by the deadline, nor, you know, we always give it. I shouldn't say it on TV, but we always have a little wiggle room mm -hmm. of a couple days and nobody has filed since then. If I can just get you, just because it's easier for me to schedule people before the design review and, you know, coming before you, um, would, would you be able to decide on an August date? Yep. You know, if you yep. sort of looking at if you're going to stay with July 17th um, as the third Tuesday, just kind of to even it out, looking at the th third Tuesday in August? Which I don't know what the date is, but the twenty first. That works. But again, I you know it, it's, yep. it's wide open. That's so fine. Uh, any any conflict on this end? I'm no? good. No. Okay, excellent. August twenty first. Yeah. Okay. It looks like none of us are taking vacation. I so. know. It's, it's usually this is tough to decide what. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of how it feels. Yeah, it's okay, fine. so that's. Okay, so we finished an entire agenda. I just still have one more thing. Oh, oh you oh, didn't ask oh, me. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. That's intentionally done. You are no longer chair of this committee. We are retracting that vote. <laughs> okay, Amy. We always yeah. need to check in with Amy at the end. Well, I just think I'm everybody sorry. should be aware there isn't a CBA meeting this month, but there was going to be a, how do you say it, Kathy? A Tredebi or Tredebi? Tredebi. Tredebi? Tredebi. Right, that's hearing been moved, to Debbie. Right? It's been moved to July, yeah. but it's still before our next meeting. What so. date in July has that been moved to? Well, the okay. if you want to speak, you have to have your letters in by July 3rd, mm -hmm. and the meeting is July 10th. Okay. At 6. I saw that is today. That here? At 6 o'clock, not 7. I don't, I don't know that if that makes here? it. Excuse me? Is that going to be here? Uh, it's yeah. in this room. It's in this room. Okay. Yeah. So July I have one question in regards to the, that meeting because that's before, so that's hazardous waste and it's before the Board of Health. But then when we talked about hazardous waste before at Bartlett Street, it said we discussed that it would come back before the planning board. So what's the difference between those two events? The, um, do you want to take a quick? Okay. <laughs> um, well, I just heard him, like you wouldn't start. Um, well, I saw you starting to talk, so I had a sigh of relief. <laughs> So the, the difference is um, if there's if a new project is coming into town and they're located in a groundwater district, okay. groundwater area one, two, or three, um, and they either need a special permit or it may require a variance, then that, that gets hooked into the site plan review process and that comes before um, either this board or the zoning board, d depending on you know who has the permit granting authority. Um, the the Tredebi site is a site that's been um, operating as such since about the mid 1970s. I'm not sure of the exact date. So the in order for um, whether it was Tredebi or if it was a restaurant that was there or a um, I don't know you know a, a, any kind of use if it's a if it's an existing use and uh, it, you know, it's 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 done. It's it's already either been before you or pre you know dated site plan review process. Um, I'm not well versed in you know board of health and DEP um, site assignments, but 
the reason why this particular one is before the Board of Health is because the, the company itself that has been there and is operating um, is looking for a, a different type of license from, that requires the Department of um, Environmental Protection. Okay. And through, through the Department of Environmental Protection, it's, it's the Board of Health that is connected to that. A lot of the Conservation Commission has a, you know, a separate area with DEP, the state agency, and then the Board of Health. Um, so from what I understand, it, it, the DEP is, is um, they're applying for a site assignment. Tordebi is applying for a site assignment. Mm -hmm. So it's not, they're not adding to the building, you know, they're not adding square footage, they're not adding parking spaces. That's what would kick something off an existing use to come before you if they were changing significantly and they met the thresholds in our zoning bylaw that kick off why they would come before a review board. Okay. What about the change in use? It isn't non-conforming to non-conforming? Because aren't they changing what they were doing? Weren't they storage and now they're doing trucking? I mean, their new name is the waste hazardous waste trucking facility. No, it's all, it's just, it's... It seems like a substantial extension of use because they're going from 11 hazardous waste codes to 552. I mean, that, that's why they're going before DEP. That's the appropriate board. You know, everyone, everyone has a place, I you know, know, whether you're before the Conservation Commission or ZBA or Planning Board or Board of Health or, you know, another licensing board, the Board of Selectmen. So there isn't anything in the zoning that, that kicks off that I mean, that, that kicks a threshold that would bring a use. So it's not like that a back. Substantial extension of use. No, it's a it's you know they they do hazardous waste today and they're going to do hazardous waste tomorrow. I mean, right. it's and now. that's what they've been doing. It's a trucking facility. Does increased traffic kick it off or no? No. Nope. Mm. Nope. It seems like a different change. Can you add that to a bylaw or no? You can't. No. No. It, it, okay. It is, it's already a process that's set up with the state. You know, okay. that, that that's, again, why they're, you know, but we can have the Board of Health come in and, and or I can get some information from him, but I mean, it's real, it's has nothing to do with the Planning Board or the Zoning Board of Appeals. Now, I'm going through all the letters back from 1971, and there are a couple of years where it says nothing has, like, a lot of the tanks were shut down and nothing had happened for a couple of years, and I'm trying to go back, and if it stops for two years, isn't that considered... You lose I, your special permit for I, your non-performing use? What I'd like to say at this point is mm -hmm. this is so out of my wheelhouse, mm -hmm. it, and it has nothing to do with the planning board, and you're discussing something that has not been advertised by this board, and the yeah. applicant is in here, and it's... Well, I just asking as a town, they must monitor it if it's stopped. It's probably Again, you a discussion that's better done yeah. offline with the regulatory boards, not the planning board no. and certainly not at a public meeting that's been advertised without that on the agenda. I mean, you can certainly have discussions about it, but this isn't the right forum because we have certain rules we have to follow. It's, I, mean, I think those are the questions that are appropriate for this, the, the hearing that they're holding. I mean, I think that's the whole purpose of the, that hearing. Okay. So as a planning board, we can't write a letter that it's not within the use of what we would approve as a planning board. I don't know enough about this project to be able to support that. I haven't even seen an application. It, it hasn't even come to our departments. I don't know one that's right. not, we, don't have, we don't have anything to do with it. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not anything that's, that's it, it, you know, it's an existing use. That's all I can tell you is that it's an existing use. Uses and, and variants from uses are usually before the ZBA, not this board. Although we are the planning board, and so we help designate where uses will occur within the town and where they won't occur within the town. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know enough about this project to be able to do anything right at this moment about it. I just, I only just learned about it last week, um, in passing. <laughs> That's how I learned about it. Too, <laughs> so, but I've been doing a lot of reading. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well. <laughs> All right. This is and a tricky one. Anything else, Amy? No. no? That's it. We can yeah, adjourn. Yeah, that's an important one. Okay. Then motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. Good. We're done. All in favor? Aye. Um, you want to take that? I think that's your original letter, Kathy. Yeah, I'm going to give that back. Oh, yeah. Yeah.